Hello learners. Today in this video we are going to learn 7th standard science chapter number 1 the living world adaptations and classification. The living world comprises of different kinds of plants and animals. In this video we are going to learn about the diversity in plants and animals and adaptation in plants Now let's focus on the point diversity in plants a great variety of plants is found on the earth some plants have colorful flowers that is called as flowering plants while some plants do not bear flowers that is called non flowering plants some plants like lucky bamboo as we all know grow in water while some plants like cactus grow in desert while some plants grow in snowy regions some plants can't be seen without a microscope they are very small in size whereas some plants are huge in size or big in size like plants animals also shows diversity some are unicellular animals that is they have only one cell while some are multicellular animals that is they have more than one cell some animals are invertebrates animals while some are vertebrates animals this world is full of a variety of animals like aquatic animals which lives in water some are terrestrial animals which lives on the earth while well, some are amphibians animals which, which lives in the water and which lives on the earth also some are reptilian animals the animals which crawl on the earth while well, some are aerial animals like birds which fly in the air why i am telling you about all this because all this get count under living world that is what we are going to learn in the chapter that how living organism live how they get adapt in a particular condition that is called as adaptation that is the definition of adaptation is gradual change occurs in the body parts and also in the behavior of organism which help them to adjust to their surroundings such changes are called as adaptation Now let's move towards the point adaptation in plants. Here we will see how plants survive under water, in the desert, in snowy region, in the forest region, in grassland plants, and for insertion of food in plants. Now let's see the first adaptation in aquatic plants. Some of the aquatic plants are firmly rooted in the soil at the bottom of the water bodies. Their stems are submerged while leaves and flowers float on the surface. Some plants roots are not anchored in the soil. The surface of the leaves and stems are mainly are entirely afloat. All aquatic plants are covered with a waxy layer and air space inside the stem and leaves adapted for floating leaves of some aquatic plants are thin and slender like a ribbon this is an adaptation to withstand fast currents of water now we will see the second type adaptation in desert plants plants and animals living in the desert need special adaptation to survive in the harsh environment many of the fascinating features of desert plants are adaptations characteristics that help the plant survive in its harsh environment desert plants have two main adaptation the first one is ability to collect and store water the second one is features that reduces water loss Some leaves seem to be modified into thorns for conserving water. Very little water is lost by evaporation. Examples of desert plant are cactus and acacia. 
The stems store water and food that is therefore fleshy. The stems are green as they perform photosynthesis in the absence of leaves. That means they prepare their own food. Their roots penetrate deep into the soil and some roots spread away into the soil in search of water. There is a thick layer of opaxy substance on the stem of these plants. The third type is adaptations in plants of snowy regions. Conifers like dodo and pine are seen in snowy regions. In snowy regions, there is a heavy snowfall and extreme cold weather. So, the shape of trees are conical in shape and their branches are sloping. The conical shape prevents accumulation of snow on the tree. Thick bark of the tree helps to withstand the cold. The fourth point, adaptations in plants of forest regions. All the plants compete for sunlight. Tree goes tall to capture the sunlight and climbers and vines grow with the support of trees. A diverse variety of plants, trees, herbs and shrubs seen in the forest. Climbers have adopted by having springs like tendrils with which they seek support from host tree. Fifth adaptation is adaptation is grassland plants. Bushes and grasses of diverse types are seen in grasslands. First, adults are found in plains and hilly areas. Soil or erosion is prevented by fibrous roots of grasses. Very tall grasses are seen in the equatorial region. Various types of large animals take shelters in these grasses. Large animals like tigers, elephant, deers remain hidden in these grasses. Very short grass grow in cold regions. Smaller animals like rabbits are seen in this grass. Large type of adaptation in plants is adaptation for indigestion of food in plants. Students, have you ever observed the adaptation in the parts of plants like potato, groundnut, grapevine, beet, bitter gourd, onion and other plants in your surrounding? Yes, you might be find that most of the plants are autotrophic, that means they prepare their own food, while some plants are parasitic because they are leafless, leafless and can't perform photosynthesis, they depend upon the other plant for their food. The other plant on which they depend for the food, that plant is called as the host plant. Example of this parasitic plant is daughter or cascuta. The roots of these plants are posterior roots used for sucking and absorbing nutrients from the host plants. Now let's move toward the fungi. Fungi is the white color cotton ball. It does not have chlorophyll and can't perform photosynthesis. Fungi obtain food from the starchy foodstuff like bhakri and bread. They have root like fibrous for absorption of food. Now students, all of you know that plants need nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium for growth. The plants like Venus flytrap, peacher plant grow in the soil which is deficient in nitrogen. So, how they will fulfill their need of nitrogen? They will fulfill their need of nitrogen by consuming insect. These plants are very colorful and attractive so that insects get attracted toward it. Once the insect get attracted toward it, these plants hold that insect and Hold them and capture. Thank you.